di ba po ang yun pong, let's say, cosine theta, kunyari cosine 120, we, 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 we were saying that it will be x over the radius, di ba po? <laughs> yes, yes. So, are, are the we, x are, coordinate are, are, over the radius. Yes, are, are we talking about the, parang, ang, ang derivation po nun, uh, cosine theta x over r is, uh, it, you, you are talking about the reflex, the reflected image po ba? All right, all right. Uh, no, no, x over r, no, sunday nga, um, the... Um, I, I'm still uh, adjusting the controls uh, uh, so, so laptop because I had this replaced kanina. It's uh... all right. Um, so we are on a unit circle. Ito. So the radius is one. So in, in general, regardless of where theta is, whether it's in the first quadrant or third quadrant, whether it's positive, so you have to go counterclockwise, or whether it's negative, so you have to go counterclockwise. And regardless of what the radius is, in general, this is the situation. Okay, so, uh, so, so let's say the radius is R. And then you have the following angle. All right. Um, the point of intersection, let's say the coordinates are X and Y. And then this is angle theta. So um, cosine theta is x over, let me use small r for uniformity with the small r I've been using. All right, and then sine of theta equals y over r. So what's going to happen is that x is r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. So alternatively, the coordinates can be expressed in terms of the angle theta and in terms of the radius r in the following manner, r cosine theta comma r sine theta. Now, uh, so if the radius of the circle is 2, then the coordinates are going to be 2 times cosine whatever the angle is, comma, 2 times the sine of that angle. In the first illustration I made here, because that's supposedly the unit circle, then the radius r is equal to 1. So okay, yeah, cosine 120 degrees and sine 120 degrees, those are the two coordinates. So, so the uh, illustration, yes, go ahead. Sorry, kunyari po itong, asan po yung origin itong ano po, itong, ay, 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 bali po ang uh, cosine theta x over r, uh, pa, 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 paano po natin nakuha yung x over r? Ah, ito, this is our definition. Get ito, definition. Let me go back to, oh, well, okay. I stated it slightly differently. Where did I start trigonometry? Was it, um, ito. actually here. Okay. Let theta be an angle in standard position and then P a point on its terminal side. Let R be the square root of X squared plus Y squared, which means if we are to draw a circle from the origin up until that point P, uh, that point P will be a point on the circle with center origin radius R. Okay, so because R is the distance of that point P from the origin. So we defined 
the six trigonometric functions of theta as the following six ratios. Cosine of theta equals x over r. So that's our starting point. That's our definition. So iba siya sa uh, high school geometry introductory definition because in high school trigonometry, usually they start with a very particular context, which is that theta is an acute angle so that you can place it inside a right triangle. But the advantage of this definition is that you can apply this definition even if theta exceeds 90 degrees, meaning we wouldn't be able to draw theta anymore in a right triangle. This definition I'm displaying right now can be applied as well, even if theta is 300 degrees, or even if it's 1000 degrees, or even if theta is negative 50 degrees. Ito definition ito, this is applicable in a much wider situation. Is it, is it the, kunyari po, di ba, let's say, let's say that theta there is 120 degrees. Pero, is it the, the, the source of the definition, is it the cosine 60 degrees po? Pero, mag-iba lang yung mga signs ng ano ng values. So, it will be sine and cosine. Just to, just to okay. make it follow the, the, everything following the same context po na... Okay. Okay, I, I wonder if the situation, if the, the the question is really more about the the history, I would imagine that historically trigonometry or these trigonometric functions at the start were defined only for acute angles. Ah, okay. Well. Uh, I I think you know, not next starts a right triangle. I, I would imagine uh, a lot of mathematics starts with experience. That was they decided to extend it in much the same way that that eh, positive integers lang ang meron ang humanity and then they, they decided gusto rin nila magkaroon ng negative integers so that they could subtract five minus seven and then they decided okay we don't want to just divide 15 divided by three we also want 15 divided by seven so nagkaroon ng rational numbers but I imagine that when these trigonometric functions were first devised, it was for angles inside a right triangle, for acute angles. And then they tried to find a way to extend it so that you can also take the cosine of 120 degrees. Okay. And in doing so, they have to find a way of defining things so that it would still be consistent with the original definition inside a right triangle. So, of course, the original definition of these trigonometric functions in a right triangle uh, limited na lang nung, because you can only apply them to 60 degrees, 57 degrees, all right? But itong definition natin, the one that I started our lesson with, this is now the wider definition because you could also apply it to 120 degrees. Okay, so if the question is, why is cosine 120 degrees and cosine, why is cosine 120 degrees the negative of the cosine of 60 degrees? I would say it's because of how this definition was given. So, basta din na find ganito ng definition na Gusto nilang gawin. The x coordinate is for cosine. The y coordinate is for is for the sine function, and then everything else is well defined based on them. Thank you, Paul. All right, so that's why cosine one twenty degrees is negative of cosine sixty degrees. Ako personally, I uh, didn't really set out to uh, memorize that in that way. Kasi kung memorize lang, ang daming tatanda eh, ang hirap eh. But what I always rely on is a visualization. I try to imagine, nasan ba ng 120 degrees and nasan ng 60 degrees? So the fact that they're supplementary means that, as in my first illustration, the purple and orange points are going to be at the same height. 
So their y coordinates are going to be equal, and their x coordinates are in turn going to be negatives of each other. All right. So um, let, let, let me write down the, the process in general. Uh, okay. So given uh, angle theta, let alpha be its reference angle. So I'll explain what the reference angle is. The reference angle, uh, wait, but I don't know. let me clarify theta, let this be a non quad rental angle. You don't have to remember all these terms, all right? It's just, you know, over time, I picked up these terms. non quadrantal angle, ibig sabihin, not... Uh, Can be anywhere, Paul. Um, yeah, I'm having a hard time with, with the eraser in the... Because I just set up the... <laughs> I just downloaded make, the drivers. Never make a mistake. Because I didn't have my eraser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Actually, I should be able to er erase it easily, but I just downloaded the drivers marketing on 4.15 p.m. So everything's new. All right. <laughs> uh, this did, did a laptop. All right. So by non quadrantal angle, it means to be in uh, the terminal ray is not on any of the X or Y axis. So, halimbawa, um, ang mga, okay, so the prefix here is non. So, quadrantal angle, that would be uh, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, negative 360 degrees. Those are the quadrantal angles. Or in regions, these would be pi, pi over 2, uh, 3 pi over 2, negative 7 pi. So those are going to be the quadrantal angles. Everybody else, meaning the terminal ray is going to be right there in the interior of the first quadrant, second, third, and fourth quadrants. They are the non-quadrantal angles. So that would be the majority. 30 degrees, 120 degrees, negative 200 degrees. 7 pi over 4. Pi over 4 is 45 degrees, so that's an option. Okay, so let uh, alpha be its so-called reference angle. So the, the, the reference angle is the acute angle that the terminal ray of uh, theta makes with the x axis. So, for example, if this is theta, then alpha is going to be the same. If um, theta is in the second quadrant, then this acute angle is alpha. If theta is in the third quadrant, if this is theta, then this is alpha. And then if theta is in the fourth quadrant, then that's alpha. And this is even if theta is negative. So for example, um, if theta is this. So para po siyang if, acute if counterpart ng angle? Yes, acute. So the, the reference angle is always going to be acute. So the observation that I'd like to point out here is the following. Okay. 
then the absolute value of cosine theta will be the same as the absolute value of the cosine of the reference angle. Oh. And then the sine of theta will be of the same magnitude, same absolute value as the sine of the reference angle. So for example, if you look at 120 degrees, what is its reference angle? 60. 60 degrees. So what is the relevance of um, determining the reference angle? It's because the sine and cosine of 120 degrees will have its value based on the sine and cosine of its reference angle, 60 degrees. Because if you know the magnitude, then you're halfway there. In the end, to determine the actual cosine and the actual sine of theta, you just need to, for the second step, determine is it going to be positive or negative. And you can make that decision by knowing what quadrant theta is going to be in. Okay, so I don't. Theta is 120 degrees, alpha is 60 degrees. So um, alpha, because this is uh, an acute angle, and in fact, 60 degrees is a special angle. Cosine 60 degrees is one half. Sine 60 degrees is square root of three over two. Therefore, if you look, if you try now to identify sine of 120 degrees and the cosine of 120 degrees then we know that oh these are gonna involve the square root of three over two and one half now the only thing that we need to determine is is it going to be exactly the same or are we going to have to put a negative sign now 120 degrees is in the second quadrant and so the y coordinates there are positive Therefore, sine 120 degrees is no modification needs to be done. Square root of 3 over 2 itself. 120 degrees being in the second quadrant where x coordinates are negative, that means cosine 120 degrees has to be negative. Therefore, this should be negative 1 half. All right? So, the example. Let's take. Um, Seven pi over six. What is its reference angle? What seven? Uh, uh, Twelve. Two pi. Two pi is equal to eight. Ah, it's more than one eighty. Mm -hmm. More than one eighty. One pi over six. So pi over six. All right, pi over six. Now let's identify the trig functions of sine of pi over six. Right. One over square root of three. What's that? Square root of three over three. Oh, I knew it. Sixty. Ah, how can that be thirty? Okay, bad drawing. All right, bad drawing. Oh. <laughs> uh, bad drawing. Ah. 
Ano sa if it's not square root of 3, then square root of 3 over 2. The drawing now is, is it correct now? Yeah. Oh, one. I thought you just remember. So let's go sine pi over six. One over square one over square root of three is ah kaya pala nagmamali po ako. Uh, square root of three. Ah, tama pala po ako. Square root of three over three. Over three. Over three. Huh? Look at the diagram. Ah, adjacent over hypotenuse. Over 2. All right. Okay. So what do you remember from Sokotoa? That's still going to hold. Uh, you can still use that because alpha is an acute angle. So if it's, you know, uh, even if theta is based on, uh, as long as theta is based on pi over 4, pi over 6, or pi over 3, you can still use them. You, you can still go back to that. A okay, cosine pi over 6, square root of 3 over 2. Okay, pi over 6 is the reference angle of theta, which can be found in which quadrant? Uh, third? Third ano po? Okay, third quadrant. So therefore now, let's write down what is the sine of 7 pi over 6? Uh, yes, negative 1 half. All right, what about the cosine of 7 pi over 6? Okay. Uh, still the same, square root of 3 over 2. Third quadrant. In the third quadrant, are x coordinates positive or negative? Negative in negative in second and fourth, so it must be positive in first and third. So if it's positive in first and third, and sine is negative, therefore cosine should be negative because the negative will cancel out. Yeah, actually, ganito lang. In uh, x coordinates are negative. In the second and third quadrants. That's why cosines are negative in the second and third quadrants. So this is now negative square root of three over two. All right? The mga values like secant, cosecant, um, tangent, and arctangent, they're going to be based on the values of sine and cosine. So for now, I'll be focusing on sine and cosine. So it's a reference angle? Pi over 4. Because so that's what it's over. Three Good. Pi over 4. What about? Pi over uh, 4 is 45 degrees. Yes. Yeah. 45, 45 What's the quadrant? Degrees. First. Tangent is positive. And then. Uh, wait, wait. First, what's the quadrant of theta? Ah, Q, Q1 po. Negative 
second quad second quadrant. I need fourth quadrant. Yes. Quadrant four. Ano na? Um, so pi over four. Uh -huh. So di ba? And then uh, nine of pi over four, but clockwise. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so uh, can, can you try to uh, give me sine of negative 9 pi over uh, and cosine of negative 9 pi over 4? Sine of pi over 4 is uh, 1 over square root of 2, which is square root of 2 over 2. But it's in the fourth mm -hmm. quadrant. Uh, tangent is positive. I don't know. Tangent is negative. So sine and cosine have different uh signs. And sine is sine is positive. Okay, so square root of two over two. In the fourth quadrant, are x coordinates positive or negative? X coordinates positive. And, and, and or what about y coordinates? Negative. So tell me, what is sine of negative nine pi over four? Okay, wait lang po. So, paga uh, y is neg. So nasa both on three and four, sine is negative. Tapos hmm. on two and three, cosine naman is negative. So negative po, negative square root of 2 over 2. But since it's in the fourth quadrant naman, tangent is negative. O sign should be positive. Yes, is it your x and y? Uh, um, Joshua, I am uh, actually wondering why you have to think about the sign of tangent. Yes. Because uh, you, you're... Tandaan mo na lang. Ito yung ito. Oh, in the fourth quadrant, X coordinates are positive. Therefore, uh, if the X coordinate is positive, then cosine theta is positive. The cosine of the angle and the X coordinate, they're going to have the same sign. So that means if X is negative, cosine is going to be negative. And then Y is positive implies that sine of theta is negative, And then that's vice versa. So if the y, the y coordinate is negative, then the sine theta is going to be negative. Oh, um, So, okay, go. Square root of 2 over 2 naman po yan. Same pa rin. All right. Okay. Okay. Time to zero mistakes. Okay, but my next one is going to be that x positive. circle at 4 pi over 2 and then now plus 3 pi how much plus 1 plus 1 and a half pi so it's 1 1 half it is positive so other than that is Pi over 2 
is equal to seven pi over two is pi over two. Actually, 7 pi over 2 is a quadrantal angle. So, so you don't have to take of a reference angle. I want you to go back to um, just imagining where is the terminal ray? This is the boundary between third and fourth. Yeah, so it's in the negative y axis. So now imagine the intersection of that with the unit circle. Once you know the intersection with the unit circle, you can now tell me the sine and cosine. Why am I imagining so much? Uh, one negative one, zero negative one. So sine is zero and cosine x. What? I think it's the other way around. Yeah. Uh, so yes, x is cosine. Uh, so zero negative one, sine is negative one, and then cosine will be zero. Yes. All right. Okay. So again, in, in the end, just imagine going around and then trying to figure out where the terminal ray is going to be. And you can also use that, as you're going to see, as basis to determine uh, some of the other properties we are going to encounter. Uh, so maybe one more. Yes. And then what's pi at eighty one eighty so sixty degrees in the second quadrant. Uh X is pa uh, X is negative and then sine is positive. Uh, so cosine is like negative and then sine will be positive. So six sixty Sine opposite, opposite hypotenuse. Square root of 3 over 2. Uh, yeah, but yung sine nga po is uh, square root of 3 over 2. Is it? Yes. And then, uh, cosine is uh, 1 over one over 2. Yeah, negative 1 over 2. Yun na po. Alright, so there you go. Okay, so observations, any multiple of 2 pi, any integer multiple of 2 pi, um, be it negative 8 pi or plus 10 pi, you could cast them out. Because anytime you go by a multiple of 2 pi, whether you're going clockwise or counterclockwise, you're just completing a revolution. 
So it doesn't really change the trig function value. So it's really relevant here is negative four pi over three, which is gonna be clockwise. So yes, you're right, second quadrant. And as soon as it's second quadrant, then you know the sign, negative and positive respectively. And so all we had to focus on was figuring out the reference angle, which you correctly identified to be pi over three, 60 degrees. And that's what led us to one half and square root of three over three. Got it? Okay. Okay. Or actually, if you want, in other words, say so yeah, um, this is cosine of, because f of x is cos cosine x, so f of negative a is merely cosine of negative a. Second, this is cosine of a plus pi. Oh, I don't need, I don't, I don't need to calculate the exact arc, arc cos of one force. I just need to. No, no. I was thinking that's impossible. How could I possibly calculate the arc cos of one, one over four? Yeah. Oh, I just need the negative. And you don't have to. <clears throat> Cosine is positive, so x is positive inside the integral third and fourth, but it is going counterclockwise. How do I do that? So what's your answer for the first? It's still one for school. All right. Okay. How about the second? Cosine of a plus pi. So one fourth and then uh, another full rotation could be either in the first or fourth, and then it ended another full rotation, half rotation. Yeah. So if it's in the first, and uh, it it happens to be a positive, it happens to be a positive uh, angle, it will go full. It will go uh, one to one. In the third quadrant, but then if it's uh, in the fourth quadrant, we'll go clockwise 180, it will be in the third quadrant, so it will be negative negative one fourth. Yes, 
So see, you don't have to find any R cosine here. What we're uh, doing here is testing ourselves on our interpretation, the, the, the meaning of the of these trigonometric functions. So and so I'm able to see your, your thought process. So what's happening with uh, negative a is that well, if uh, this is a, so if this is a, then this would be negative a. All right. So the intersection points on, on the unit circle, they're, they're going to be right on top of each other. So their cosines are going to be equal. Uh, tapos. And then, of course, if it was, uh, let's say, a is in the fourth quadrant, then that would mean negative A is in the first quadrant. Oh, so so the points of the in circle. It can just be both in either first or fourth. Pagasinit yeah. Um. All right. And then cosine A plus pi. So if A is in the first quadrant, A plus pi is going to be in the third quadrant. So this would be A plus pi. So you're going to get uh, this point. So A, B, and C. So C will have an X coordinate, the negative of the X coordinate of A. And then if A was in the fourth quadrant, A plus pi is going to be in the, wait, my area. A would be going uh, clockwise, but then adding pi, would bring it there in, in the second quadrant. So uh, if this is A, and then the, the, the point C would still have the negative of the X coordinate of A. OK, uh, last item, cosine of negative A plus pi. So, so A and B are no. Uh, yeah, yeah. A, A, if A, A is either in the first or fourth quadrant, so of course the opposite would be on second or third. So from second, if it's in the second, then uh, the negative a will be in the second. I add the uh, one eight, it will be in the fourth, which will make it one fourth. And then also for the third domain, we'll still go to the first one, which is reverted back to one fourth. So basically, nga po, one fourth. So wait, what's your answer here? Is it um, one fourth or negative one fourth? Kasi ano po eh, yung in in hindi man po sinabi ko sa yung like yung nasa second naman. So negative A pa rin, A pa rin is in the first or fourth, then it will become in the second, third, second, third. Third, it will just go to the first and then second will just go to the fourth quadrant. So kumbaga po, uh, effectively it will still flip it. It will flip it back from one, negative one part to one fourth ulit po. So is your answer positive or negative one fourth? Positive one. Okay. Well, there's only two answers, either one fourth or negative one fourth. And see how I've been hesitant to writing down negative one fourth. So what I'm getting for is, sorry, I've been hesitant to write down positive one fourth because what I'm getting for is negative one fourth. Let's take the first illustration. So I'm going to use a different color. So A is in the first quadrant. So that means negative A is in the fourth quadrant, as you can see in the illustration. So where is negative A plus pi going to be? So you would have negative A going like so. I accidentally used the I accidentally use the, 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 the plus pi. Plus pi I the would go. Uh, plus pi would go counter. Clockwise. So here is where we're going to find negative A plus pi. I forgot co in cosines, signs do not matter. All right. Okay, so cosine negative A plus pi is final answer. Negative one fourth. Negative one fourth. The way I do it is I don't necessarily remember uh, what what the sign is gonna be. In the end, it for me it boils down to imagining. I, I visualize. Uh, 
where, uh, so if A is here, where is A plus pi going to be? Where is negative A plus pi going to be? All right, because that it allows you to also know what if we're looking at their sines rather than their cosines. All right, so Usually don't necessarily. Uh, Iba the situation, right, right. But in the end, so as you can see, it's determining A, B, C, and D. How are they related to each other? Are their x coordinates equal? Are their y coordinates equal? Or negatives of each other? Oh wait, hold on, I made a mistake. Uh, that means I'm gonna have to use the eraser. All right, I gotta restart later, I think. That's what the driver needs, so. I meant 359 degrees. Uh, I, 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 but, but, but it's right for you to point it out. I, I got ahead of myself. Or how about Joshua? Joshua, I think it's fun if you think about this on your own. All right. So, uh, so why don't I ask you for the value of this as well? This is like some Olympiad, you know, Olympiad grade question. What? What? Yeah, but you should be able to. Uh, so, in the end, visualize. In a book. All right. 
Okay. Do you want to think about that? Do, do you want to think about it now or later? You can think about it later. I don't know. I say I wanted to talk about uh, um, trigonometric identities. Okay. Yes, okay. So, so it is going to scan everything. Uh, it starts from one, and then it just keeps on going. Uh, it's not it's not perfect, uh, but it's still it's still like a round estimate until three fifty nine, one eighty, and then like this again, but it's negative. So it'll just cancel out everything. Everything becomes zero. Yeah. So do do you have an answer for the first, the cosines or the sines? For the sines, po, it's zero. For the cosines, uh, I think it's the same. Mila po, because the sa sines po kung bagay mga quarter circles na na nakadrain na pusla, so it's much easier to see. So, yun sa cosine naman, positive and then negative, cancel out. And then now, it will become positive again. I what? No. Is it? The first item is not zero. Oh, well, so positive and then negative, cancel, negative pa rin. And then now, at the fourth one, it will start to become positive. So, that will also cancel out. So zero, I want not zero, not zero. Not zero. You, you're uh, so it's a, it's a bit subtle. So um, but, but yeah, yeah. You, you have the right idea though. You have the right idea. I need to now. I need to consider the the, the individual values that could be special. First of all, the the first term and then the second, the last term, one and. 359 should be considered and then the the what are those yung uh, 90 yung mga axial na angles so I also have to I don't know except 360 because it's not counted uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay until 90 is the same wait what's cos 90 is 0 anyway so yeah 89 90 91 92 93 till till 351 to 359. That's still not the negative. There's, there is something I am ignoring. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a hint. One, two, three, all the way to 359. What you have here is an odd collection of numbers. It's not an even collection of numbers. Ah, okay, so I don't have 360. So you don't have 360. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so one, one, to, 1 to 89 will cancel with 91 to, 91 to not 180 because I'm, I'm actually not counting, I'm, I should not be counting, but I will just do it anyway. 91 to 179 Yes Okay, what's name? 181 is I think you can ask the name 
you got it uh the, the the thought process so it's ultimately just um uh visualizing that the cosines here are the x coordinates of these points so about meron kang point na to the cosine is the x coordinate here but then there's this corresponding angle whose x coordinate is going to be the negative of that so the x coordinates are going to cancel but so therefore we just need to check sino sa kanila nung walang mga partner. So, well, 90 degrees has no partner uh, because it's on the positive x-axis, but positive y-axis rather, but its cosine is zero anyway. Same with a cosine of 270 degrees. So that leaves us with just one angle, which has no partner. So that's going to be uh, 180 degrees. Cosine 180 degrees is negative 1, which is not paired up because we don't have cosine 0 degrees. We don't have cosine of 360 degrees. So it's not given here. So that's why this is negative 1. As for the signs, well, the sign of 90 degrees is 1 sine of 270 degrees is negative 1. So they're going to cancel each other out. For the signs ang magka cancel are, well, okay, maybe we should draw it here. For this angle, the sign of this angle is going to be canceled by the sign of this angle. And then, so again, a well partner would be the sign of 180 degrees, but it doesn't matter because the sign of 180 degrees is zero anyway. All right. So negative one and then zero. Okay. All right. Um, in, in the remaining time, let's talk about uh, proving Identities? Oh no. Yeah. No. Right. Ah. Okay. So this is gonna take a couple of lessons because we're gonna establish uh, the the other system, the angle addition formula uh, for for sines and cosines and tangents and uh, some other identities. So let's just uh, get on to it. Okay. Prove the following. 
So the first is cosine of x over uh, secant x minus tangent of x equals 1 plus sine of x. Okay, so I'm going to put that inside the box. Now, sometimes um, it's apparent which of two sides is more complicated. So let's start with that. So that uh, if we start with the seemingly more complicated side, our goal would be to try to simplify it. So, both of them are complicated. So, ginagawa ko po. Bawa po actually mag-modify ng isa pong side. Ah, oh, pwede pa rin. As long as umabot? Mag-number siya. Di ba yung sinabi niya 3, ano? 3, 3, I will ask you. Yeah, as long as magpareho sila. So, you could modify the left-hand side. Kumari, the left-hand side equals A. And then the right-hand side equals A as well. So therefore, you can conclude the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal. Kala ko po kasi, kala ko po kasi, ano eh, yun pala po yung sinasabi na yung, hindi pala pwede po yung mamodify na po both at the same time or magiging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't work backwards. Kasi, um, well, you know, for, for like when you're solving an equation, we, we, we do that, but then you have to weed out extraneous roots. So the secant and tangent can be expressed in terms of sine and cosine. So that's always reliable. See if you can express everything in terms of sine and cosine. So secant x is cosine x. Tangent x is sine of x over cosine of x. So the denominator cannot be stated as 1 minus sine of x over the cosine of x. And, uh, All right, and then I think I'm going to run out. So what uh, suggestions? How, how can we proceed? Uh, cosine squared x Pythagorean. Uh, cosine squared x is 1 minus sine squared x. Right. Oh, and, oh, oh. Uh, so it's the a, 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 a squared minus b squared over a minus Yeah, over a minus b. All right, so now you have 1 plus sine of x. So there you go. Tangent, tangent. What? No. Yeah. Whenever there's a square for you, should always take the opportunity to look at the Pythagorean identity. Okay. Uh, many times that's gonna help. Well, I have it in my notes, the tangent and cotangent expression. That's why I wrote tangent. I wrote the letter T. But I decided to flip the two sides because what I want to suggest is starting with what seems to be more complex and start with that, whether it's the left side or the right side. I think what more complex point this idea is the right side. But uh, 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 you need to you will flip the equation and the way. So let's try to write in terms of sine and cosine. Basta po yung ginagawa ko po, basta may tangent or cotangent, tsaka yung mga second, cosecond, always in sine and cosine. Mm-hmm. All right. That's uh, reliable. Let's multiply by just a clear fractions sine theta cosine theta over sine theta cosine theta. And then the denominator is one. And 
And actually, that's it. Yeah, we, we didn't have to do anything with the right side. So ultimately, it's a matter of style. Uh, I would imagine this would also have worked if Kamara, the, the numerator, you wrote it as uh, tangent theta minus one over tangent theta. And then the denominator tangent theta plus one over tangent theta. I, I can see it ultimately uh, working. Um, since I already wrote it down. A one over tangent theta. If you multiply both the numerator and denominator by tangent theta, so tangent squared theta minus one over tangent squared theta plus one. But then that's going to turn. Uh, what can we change here? The numerator or denominator? Numerator looks uh, looks like uh, oh wait, the denominator then the second squared. Yeah. Oh, that's just that's just one over cosine squared. Oh, wait. Hmm. Yeah. So that means secant squared theta is going to be because that's in the denominator. You could write it in the main level as its reciprocal, cosine squared theta. Oh, and then times. Tangent squared theta minus what is minus yeah. Tangent squared minus one. Minus one. And then what's not what is to be proved? Ah, in the same number. So oh. and it's uh just in the it will just uh cancel out. Uh so so we're gonna end up with the same sine squared theta minus cosine squared theta. I think it's easier to see which is more complex, <laughs> which side is more complicated. I guess that's a possibility, but um, let me square that first, uh, secant squared minus tangent squared, uh, before writing everything in terms of sine and cosine. But, but sure, I, I think uh, in the end, the matter, but we'll have my ESEP, write everything in terms of sine and cosine. But, but here, uh, let me write this as secant squared theta minus two tangent theta secant theta plus tangent squared theta plus one ah. over I said I'm seeing I could combine these into second right oh, all, of them, uh, all of them will be all of them can be factored by second yes all right, apparently, because uh, in the denominator, all right, right, in, in the numerator, you can factor out secant, but in the denominator, um, it's just all factored out, na po eh. Meron na po po so. uh, factored na. All right, so again, let's just see what we get out of that uh, secant theta minus tangent theta. In the numerator, you're going to have secant squared theta doubled. So you can factor out two and secant theta. So we would get secant uh, theta minus tangent theta. Turns out that the 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 factored the factored out the 
Factors can be cancelled. Yeah. And that's it. Because right, I that's it. Over cosine over cosine. You can now flip two times one over cosine, one over sine theta. So two sine theta over cosine theta, giving us the desired two tangent theta. Uh, ultimately, it's going to be more fun if you would be the one doing it. So I, of course, intend to write down some things for you to try, but not just for this exercise, but also for the, I mean, not just for this lesson, but the other lessons. So when I get the chance, but, but anyway, Mary Kapa naman mga iso solve it, diba? Mary Kapa mga iso solve. So at this point, you haven't run out yet that I want you to solve. Both sides are in their own right rather complex. So instead of converting the left side completely to produce the right side, or converting the right side completely to produce the left side, what we can try to do is handle the left side separately, and then work on the right side separately, and then hope that we're able to come up with the same expression for both of them. Let's start with the left hand side. Uh, all right. You know what? Because this is um, literally no, no, copy paste. <laughs> oh, stop me, Joshua. Stop me. Okay. <laughs> stop me, kid. Stop me. <laughs> All right. Uh, wait. Uh, it's changing to that. Hmm. All right. Okay. Let's try sine and cosine. About, I, it's because I have no more ideas. Just convert everything into sine and cosine and then simplify as much also, as possible. Also, in the first fraction, secant and tangent have cosine in their denominator. About. And then in the second main fraction, you can write them with sine in their denominators. So you have one minus sine x over one plus sine x plus one plus cosine x over well obviously i made a mistake this should be uh one minus one minus uh mistaken sign here all right um it's as simple as it gets spreading e you know what i think I was wondering, should I combine them under the same denominator? I think we should because the right, the, the original right side is a fraction, a single fraction, with just one denominator. So I think 
we should um one plus sine one plus sine times one minus cosine one minus All right, right. Okay, so madami silang magka-cancel. So the numerator is going to be doubled. All right, so that's um, quite convenient. At least we see where the number two is uh, going to come from. So we have... Um, so two plus... Two sine of x cosine of x, and then in the denominator, right now I see no reason for. Anyways, again for now, one plus sine of x, and then one minus cosine of x. I think I'm gonna now go to the original right side, and I know you will not object. I'm gonna copy no. it. No. Yes, I will. Stop me. <laughs> Why? Stop me. So sides and cosines. Two. Cosecant one over sine. And then, well, this is as simple as it gets sine of x. And then, tangent is uh, sine x over cosine x minus sine of x. Secant is one over cosine of x. And then, minus one. In the numerator, this sign and sign are going to cancel each other out. So in fact, if you look at um, the complex fraction we have here, there's only one denominator, cosine of x. And so let's multiply by cosine x over cosine x, giving us 2 plus 2 sine of x cosine x. What? Yeah, and then sine of x minus sine of x cosine x oh i see plus right. one minus cosine x and i bet that the denominator is factorable so actually here we just need to check if it does factor into i guess we just check one plus sine x times one minus cosine x, uh, yeah. And this is the, so that's the, right. yeah, well, I wanted to write down here. Literally cup. Yeah, left hand side and right hand side. And so now we've shown that the right hand side is equal to the left hand side. Ah. Okay. It's a try more. Uh, so I, I know uh, we are usually uh, two hours, 
but I hope Sergey and Joshua, you won't mind because I need to do something at 6 p.m. and I hope no mga other sessions. Uh, ordinarily, I, I really don't mind no mga lumalam pas time in two hours. So bawi na lang ako next time. So if you know, I, I'd like to end the discussion today uh, at this time, but I'd like you to try the following on your own. Oh no. Yes, it's not that complicated. Uh oh. Yes, equal. All right. Yes, it's not that complicated. Yes, yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> Pag may free time po kayo ko if you're able to put in more complicated kasi magaling po si Joshua dyan sa unproving identity. Oh, ano sa mga ganito, alright? Sige, sige, sige. Alright. Okay po. Okay. Hi Joshua, Sir Jay. Thank you. Bye-bye po, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.